Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. John 10, 10 said, And Jesus said unto his disciples, The thief cometh not but for the steal, to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have what? Life and that they may have it how much? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the, she and the shepherd give his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, see it the wolf cometh or coming and leave the sheep and the flee and the wolf catch them and the scatter the sheep. The hireling flee it because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. But before we go into John 10, 10, he said in verse 9, said, I am the, the door. By me, if any man entered in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out, finding pastors. Anybody find the one with Luke, please? Luke 20, 22 what? Verse 13, 31. Thank you very much. I miss it by a chapter. Luke 22, verse 31. Verse 28, say, And ye and they, he said, And he, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. And I appointed unto you a kingdom. And my father had appointed un that my father had appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and sit on throne judging the twelve tribe of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon and Simon, behold, Satan had a desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Father, today we thank you for the word, the word they are life, and the spirit. I pray that your word will continue to bless us and encourage us and motivate us. I pray you give me receptive heart, and then the people heart will be open to receive the engrafted word of you. Holy Spirit, the word represent you. And may our heart receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to be able to focus my attention more on Luke chapter 22 and verse 28 to 32. Now I want us to understand that the Bible said the devil come not but for the steal to kill and to destroy. The devil have many strategies that he will use against us as believers. One of the things that the devil often do is to find a way into our life how we can distract us. The, script, the scripture said that the thief comes not much, um, when you look at Adam, he said there are three things that God actually encourages us not to involve in. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are the three main temptations that Satan opposes 
whether you're Christian or not. The eyes, the flesh, and the pride. Three things that he used. What he used? Eyes, the flesh, and the pride of life. Then the question is asked, why did he use those two things or three things against us? Whatever your eyes see, the flesh gravitate to. Amen, somebody? And then take a level of pride in an individual. When you look at people's behavior, you will know how proud they are. It matters that's not really concerned. Some people, dis they allow themselves to be so proud over certain things. And you can see the level of pride in their life. That sometimes they're not even able to mash ants. Just as I said, right? Because you can see it. And you can see the behavior just the way they treat people. You may pass them going on the road, not even a morning, not even a good evening, not even something. And if you do say something to them, they think that you are trying to track them. Amen. A gentleman was giving me a story some years ago, and I take it very serious. That's why I'm see when I look at human beings, human beings are most important to me. Not my car, not my house, not my land. You are more important to me than the assets of life. He said he was walking down the Tillis Beach Road, and while he was going, a beautiful young lady passed him. She didn't say morning, she didn't say good evening. I mean morning, nothing at all. She passed him straight. But at the same time, a bee or a fly will fly in and stuck in her ears. And when that happened, instead of going the direction where she was going, she turned around and now going to the direction the gentleman is going. And she run that man breathless down the road and said, Sir, sir, help me. Because the bees in her ears and he just and, and she don't know because she and he has to fight with her and say, Okay, calm yourself. Calm yourself. Apparently he didn't able to go right down inside, but he stuck there. But the discomfort of him, he had to beg her, calm yourself. And after he was finished with her, he took it out and he gave her a lecture. He said, If I was a different man, you dare not touch me. You dare not ask me for help. He said, you are very naughty. When you pass me on that way, you did not even say morning. You didn't say nothing to me. And the lessons learned in that picture is that it doesn't matter how handsome or how beautiful we are. We are all human beings. And nothing can stop you. The look of our face, we have different facial looks. We dress different. Amen, somebody. If you see me out of my shirt and my pants and you see me in my short pants or you see me in my bush clothes or whatever it is, seen about my animal, you're going to say, oh, is this the bishop? But let me say this to you. Title does not change me from who I am. Are you hearing me, somebody? A young lady was giving me a story last night and she was saying to her husband, she said, since I'm a little girl going to the church that bishop will in the time that he was, he is the same person. I remember one time a lady was giving a story. She said she was having a conversation with another man and the man was describing me. And she said the man was saying to her, all he's doing is playing to speak like a Yankee. And she said to him, you don't know him. If you know who he is, just the way he's speaking, that is how we speak from his youth up. And she's correct because my mother taught us to speak proper English. I lived through that for years. And one day a police walked up to me and said, we need to get you back to Grenada. So I'm wondering, why am I supposed to go to Grenada? He said, you sound like a Grenadian. So he needed my passport or my, my ID card to make sure that I'm not from Grenada. I was coming from Guyana and as I ran to Trinidad, the immigration officer take me and tell me, you go over so. It was me and my wife, eh? My wife go on one way and I go on the next way. So I'm wondering why he sent me across there. 
He said, you need to go to the area which they are checking in. You know, when people come from a foreign country, you look like a, uh, you're not from to Trinidad, you're a Guyanese. The man did not even look at my passport. The man think that I'm a Guyanese. So when I get across the line and I reach up to the line and I'm going in, the immigration officer, he said, what are you doing here? I said, this, your colleague sent me across it. He said, I'm sorry. Welcome back home. <laughs> because he thought that I'm an immigrant. I don't know what about my speech or what about me look like an immigrant. I remember one time I was coming, a good friend of mine told me, he said, there is a lady where you live in Plymouth, believe that you are from a small island. And he dealt the gentleman by saying, yes, he's a small island. The, the gentleman said to the woman, no, he is from Lekito. He said, Lekito people doesn't talk so. You're fooling me, he's from some small island. But the person, my wife, is good friends, eh? So one day while I was coming from Mount Irving's side, we pick up the lady. And the conversation start. And she said, you know me, tell the man that you're from some small island. And my wife said to her, she said, so where are you from? I said, I'm from Lekito. She said, oh my God. I cannot believe that Lekitonian can speak good so. So I don't know how, how people expect people to speak. Amen, somebody. You see, this is how the enemy brand the people. The Bible said the devil come not but for the door. Steal to kill and to destroy. Have you ever had anything within your life that is just taken away from you? And you ask yourself the question, why is this thing taken away from you? And sometimes you blame other people except the devil. The enemy is good at taking away stuff from you. He takes away your money. Sometimes it take away your children through sicknesses. It take away your husband. It take away your wife. It take away so many things from you. And most of all, he take away your life as a believer. If you don't pursue God. Because he come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen, somebody? He knows that he don't have all, powerful, all power because he's not omnipotent. The word omnipotent meaning that God is all powerful. That's who God is. The word omnipresent meaning that God can be here, there, and everywhere. The devil cannot do that. The word omniscient means that God knows all things. The devil does not know all things. Don't you know that the devil cannot read your minds? He cannot read no one mind. What he can do, he can see your action or if you give him a clue about your life, he will tell you things about you because you allow that. When the Obia men or the soothsayers or the palm readers tell me, let me see your hand and then can tell you a little bit about your life. What do you think happened? These operate with media spirits. So these spirits now can tell them information about you. Because remember, from the time you're born to the time you stand at that time, how many years you are at that time, they can tell them things about you. But in the future, they cannot tell them things about yourself. So you need to know that you don't allow these people to read your hand palm and to tell you what they think you will become. And some people accept what they say to them. And in a matter of fact, their life become bound by what they say to them. Ain't nobody walking up to me and tell me they want to read my hand palm and tell me that, yeah, by the time you reach 30, you're going to die. If you accept that, you're going to die. You know that? And they like to tell you when they believe you will live. You got to be careful with them. You see what happened? Their minds have been so corrupt or they are carrying a signal from the demonic world. And that's how Satan operates. Satan cannot be here, there, and everywhere at the same time. He could only be at one place at one time. But what he has, he has principalities, powers, rulers, darkness, and scrolls of demons in different places set up. So what they do, they communicate to him about you, 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 me. In your house, they communicate to Satan in your house and tell him what happened. So and so having problem. 
And Satan will say to them, make sure the problem escalates. Don't allow the problem to come to a close at all. So in your own house, you are having problem and don't know why it's not stopping. Why it's not coming to an end. Because demonic spirits are just in your perimeter and they are looking for an open door. Only waiting for you to make a mistake. When a man commits a murder, you think he just committed because he premeditated. It's a demonic spirit that is in his mind and telling him, and he keep repeating all the time, I will kill. And the spirit of murder will take him over. And after he finished killed, he's like a normal person again. You know why? Because everything that has to do with this development, they are spirits. Even in this church, you may be here watching me, but your thoughts is one million miles away from here. Because even your thoughts, demonic spirit knows how to send signal to destroy your thoughts and give you evil thoughts. You know many people in church, but they're still on their phone, watching their phone to see what's going on? Because their thoughts has become something of the enemy. Now the Bible said in Luke chapter 22 and the verse 30, 28 to 31. Let me read please. Jesus was making a comparison and he was saying something to his disciples. And the Bible tells us that I want to focus on verse 31. But 30, I will read verse 30, 31 and 32. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the throne judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord changed his information on what he was saying to the disciples because he was telling them what will happen in the latter days to come. And just when the Lord was speaking, now Satan opposed the Lord. So hear what the Lord said. Peter, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had a desire to have you that he be, may be what? Safe as we. When the Bible says Simon, Simon, hear what the next, the, the other part of it. Simon, Simon, Satan begged me permission to sift you like wheat. Could you imagine that? They were having a normal conversation. Jesus was saying things to them that was going to happen. And just in a split moment, Satan showed up. And as he showed up, Jesus had to mention to Peter, he just asked me permission to sift you like wheat. You know what it is to sift something like wheat? You know what wheat is? You grind the wheat and then you throw it up in the air and the ox blow. That's what it means. So Satan's desire was to take Peter out. Get rid of Peter because he's going to create some problem in the future. Amen, somebody? Some of you, the devil wants to get you out because you're already creating problem in his kingdom. Are you hearing me, somebody? There are some people that the devil not want to be saved because if they get saved, they will create problem in his kingdom because their heart is on God. Are you hearing me, somebody? His purpose is to destroy us. Every person that get married, the spirit of divorce always attacks them. When myself and my wife get married 35 years ago, the first year we could have been separated. Pressure. No matter how much we love each other, pressure. But you know what happened? We had to pray. We have good people in our life who encourage us and tell us, you could make it. And we did make it. 35 years now. So now we could try all we want. You can't shift house at all. Amen. I was so grounded. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. You had to come with, big, you had to come with, with, with what? Tractor and um, bulldozers and all. And you still can't move us. Because we stand or we sit upon the rock of Christ. You know there are some rock that bulldozers can't move at all. At all. It got some blue rocks that not even a sledge could break it. You know what can break some blue rocks? You had to put fire on it and long time.
time fire and then throw water and, and then it will just explode. That's how we could break that. There are some blue rock, no fire, no back, nothing can crush that. It's water and fire. You know, you have to use those two elements. What and what? Water and fire. You give it plenty, 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 plenty fire. Fire, fire, fire. And when you get the fire, the fire now is going to expand. And when you throw the water in it now, it goes just expand and burst. We stand upon Christ a solid rock. And no devil in hell is going to move us. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody? So if Jesus is saying, Satan beg me permission to sift you like wheat. He is asking me, Jesus, allow me so I can sift Peter like wheat. Hear what Jesus said. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. How is that possible? He's with Jesus for almost three and a half years. And you are telling me that Peter was not converted? Come on, somebody help me, please. Don't you know in the Christian faith, there are people who are in the Christian faith for years and they're still not converted? Conversion is a steady level in one's head where one recognizes his life must continuously go in forward with God. Nothing shall shift you from going back from God. Are you hearing me, somebody? There are some people that just don't know what decision to make. One foot in church, one foot out. And I'm not just talking about in the building. I'm talking about following Christ as Lord and personal Savior. That's what conversion is about. And most time, it is very rare that some people understand the true meaning of conversion. Jesus said, I have what? Prayed for thee that thy faith failed not. Your faith will not fail. Why? From the time you were born, God gave every man a measure of faith. God gave us a what? A measure of faith. Without that measure of faith, you will never accept Christ as your personal savior. So that measure of faith has given you with God, the Holy Spirit, allowing you to understand that you have the capacity and the ability in you to make the right decision. Amen, somebody. So there are some people that will always make the right decision because your faith fail it not. Are you hearing me, somebody? You have to have your faith stand strong. Too many believers have been shaken by wind. That does not make no sense. I remember as a young man growing up, there was a young lady in this village that I like. I was young, but I like her. But she did not take me in at all. And one day, when I give my life to Christ, I'm telling you how serious this thing is, eh? I gave my life to Christ. I don't know how she knew that I was baptized on that day. So I was baptized and on my way up. And she stopped me. This had to be the devil. She said, come Vaughn. Because Vaughn is a home name. That's not my name, eh? She said, come Vaughn. And she hugged me and she gave me a kiss by my cheeks. And she said, next me, I'm giving you no kiss by your cheeks. Now come back later, I'll give you something nice. I went home and I turned, I turned stupid there. Because you know you're behind somebody for a little bit, they not take you and then just come and give you a kiss. Forgetting that I just get baptized, you know. The, the, result, the result of it, the mistake she make is to allow me to go home and think. Amen, somebody? By the time I reach home and I think, I recognize, I say, wait, wait, wait. How she know that I was baptized? How she know? And that puzzled me for a long time. I said, how does this woman know that I was baptized? But then I recognized that the devil would have given her information. He baptized, take him now. He baptized, take him now. If you get him now, he will be condemned. He will condemn himself and say, you know what happened? They say, okay. And you, will get him, and you will get him for yourself. So when I went home, and I prayed, Sister Timothy, and I remember what the word of God taught me because we went through converse class. I said, you will never catch me, devil. You ain't going to sift me like, are you hearing me somebody today? And thank God I was an overcomer. Are you hearing me somebody? 
She recognized that she could not have caught me or she couldn't have get me. She not bother with me again. I am a somebody. But if I fall, I would have had a problem evangelist. I can't tell nobody about love because you could tell them, he, no man, he's a woman, he's an already. Amen, somebody. That's how the devil used his momentum to save us like we open our eyes, man. Watch me, man. Watch me. Amen, sin of God. The devil loses us to destroy us. Amen. So the Lord said that Satan desire you like wheat to save you like wheat. But he said, I pray that your faith faileth not. And when ye are converted, strengthen the brethren. Peter was truly converted when? When you check the life of Peter after Jesus was crucified or before he was crucified, the Bible tells us that Jesus said, you will deny me. Peter said, I will never deny you. But when they hold Jesus and they take him into that place to try him, the Bible says, if you hear Peter mouth in there, Peter cause all kind of bad with inside there. Me, me tell him me don't know the man. What's going on with that? Me don't know him. He expressed himself, I tell you I don't know him, until the cock crow. And after the cock crow, Peter recognized that he had made a mistake. And the Bible said he surrendered his life to God. And he cried like a baby. And God was able to forgive him. And from there, Peter's life continued to go upward. Jesus saw them 40 days after, three times. And the last time Jesus saw him, he gave them a command, command in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth in me shall be saved, and he that believeth in me shall be damned. And he tell them exactly what to do and what not to do. Let me say to our saints of God, Jesus Christ is coming sooner than we think. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody? Are you hearing me, please? And it doesn't matter what your life look like. Do not allow the enemy to sift you like wheat. You see, you have the Holy Spirit that can direct you. You have the Holy Spirit that can command and can bring you into a place where your life can be totally surrendered to God. Do not allow the enemy to sift you like wheat. It's on your job site. It's in your home. It's in your car. Maybe somebody you may be dropping to walk ever so often and they may be saying negative things about you. Have you ever reached people? They say nothing good about you but always negative things. Don't take those words. Anytime people say things about you negative, say, I don't receive that. That is your word. Amen. Somebody said, hey, hey, that is my word. That is your word. How can your word have effect on me and it's not my word? It is your word. And when you speak something out of your mouth, that's mean that's who you are. Amen, somebody? The Bible said there is fool said inside there is no God. Amen, somebody? So we need to understand Satan's ultimate desire for all of us. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he also wants to save us like wheat. And when he means save you like wheat, take out everything in you that you know that you will not be able to restrain him or strengthen yourself. The locks that the wheat have in it is to keep the wheat from not spoiling. It grows with a pod. Amen, somebody? And it's really much, it hides itself in that little pod until it is grind. And then the hawks now is literally what? Blown away. And all that leave is the wheat itself to be used. But if you don't store that wheat in a, in a good place, it's going to be spoiled. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network.